Hi, I've been asked to talk a little bit about symbols. We find lots of symbols in everyday life and it can be from the very simple crucifix or circle forms, um, from the uh, pyramid with the eye on the one dollar bill. And some people say that there's a lot of power in symbols, while well, other people kind of like deny it and see them as just like a little drawing. To understand symbols, we have to understand a little bit where they come from, what is the essence of a symbol. And the interesting thing here is that even cultures which are uh, separated, so for instance the Japanese and the Mayan people, they tend to develop similar symbols. Uh, partially this is of course can be explained by having common roots and uh, migration of people, but even without that many symbols tend to be the same regardless of culture. It's also caused the uh, psychologist Carl Gustav Jung to postulate a symbol space and he was not actually the first one to do that because Plato already started with this. And Plato theorized that there was in a way a more perfect world where everything is existing in a more perfect form and that the forms in this world are in a way derived from those more perfect forms. In a similar way uh, Carl Gustav Jung postulated that there is a collective consciousness and within this collective consciousness there are archetypes and every form we have in this world is derived from that archetype. So in that sense you could say a uh, symbol is kind of a, a framework, a concept. And this is indeed very close to uh, what a symbol actually is. So symbols exist on several layers of consciousness and all of them are actually quite high. So it is not such a normal thing to work with symbols at all. And not everybody is equally skilled at working with symbols because the, they cannot at attain the right state of consciousness to work with them in a good manner. So, if we look a little bit at how we evolved symbols as humankind, we started out living a little bit similarly like, uh, like animals just trying to survive and slowly but surely we got the better of our uh, instincts, our emotions, and we became able to guide ourselves. And together with this process of uh, self-management, we started to develop concepts to aid us in the self-management, concepts to, um, in a way, represent our constituent parts, uh, our life force, our spirit, our body, um, different types of emotions, different types of fe feelings, different types of action, different roles within society. And we started to assign different symbols to, you could say, our basic components. And as time went by, we got better and better at this system of classification and we started to create more and more subclassifications. So it's a little bit um, like the, the uh, Linnaic system where you have like the species and within the species there's families and so on and so forth. So you could say we have root symbols, very basic symbols, and lots of symbols are derived from that. Um, these symbols also form often the root of uh, languages. When we started to build languages, they were not very abstract languages. We were talking about things which were there in our everyday life. Uh, trees, different types of animal, different types of plant, different types of action. And yeah, for a being who's living out in the wild, there's a very limited set of things around. And by often combining 
just two symbols or sometimes three, you can make a very accurate description of what it is. And some languages actually still reflect that. You have, for instance, languages um, like Chinese or Japanese, where basically by combining various symbols you create a new letter. And languages like German, where you also take the constituent words and just mash them together into one big word to create a new concept. And this is how our languages were and have actually um, grown. So the old alphabets are not so much alphabets as we know today, where every letter is just a component of a word, but every letter in itself or every number in itself held a power, held a meaning, was relating to an important element in our environment. And by combining these powers, these elements of our environment, you can create new structures, new things can form. And this is the essence of a symbol. You are in a way taking components and combining them. We'll talk a little bit now in the next video about magical languages and the evolution of language before going deeper into the subject of symbols.